you very much for that very interesting discussion. Um, so next we have Dr. Wang who will be discussing a case of epithelial ingrowth. much for the opportunity to present today. So today I wanted to present a patient of Dr. Lin's who came to us with a challenging case of epithelial ingrowth. So this was a 41-year-old female who had LASIK in both eyes in 1999 with a microkeratome and then had LASIK retreatment in 2011 in both eyes with epithelial ingrowth in both eyes after that retreatment. She had actually already gotten two flap relifts in both eyes combined with retreatment and some type of glue per her history. Her left eye was not bothering her, it corrected to 2020, but the right eye was really the most bothersome to her. Um, she only corrected to about 2040, and uh, she also described her vision as very distorted. And as you can see here, there are four very prominent areas of epithelial ingrowth underneath her flap. So when faced with this patient, I had a few questions. First is, what is epithelial ingrowth? Um, second is, how common is epithelial ingrowth, and what are the risk factors for its development? And finally, what are the treatment options? So let's go over the first question, which is what is epithelial ingrowth? So um, epithelial ingrowth, uh, as it sounds like, is epithelium growing where it should not be. Um, it actually wasn't first described with LASIK. It was first described with glaucoma surgeries and extra caps. And we actually have pathology from some of these patients. Um, so this was um, an interesting case of a 77-year-old man who received extra cap surgery in 1977 and then had a gray membrane grow over the endothelium of superior cornea and also over some of the anterior segment structures. And what the surgeons elected to do in this case was actually treat him by excising his iris, ciliary body, cornea, and limbus with a corneal transplant, hence why we have pathology. Here you can see a photograph, and the black arrowheads are pointing to that gray sheet of uh, cells. And here's the pathology. So super interesting. You can see the epithelial cells actually growing over decimase membrane, DM, um, and the corneal endothelium, CE. CS indicates corneal stroma. Now, after the advent of LASIK, um, there were, uh, started becoming case reports of epithelial ingrowth in LASIK flaps. And we actually have pathology from some of these samples as well. Um, and that is because, um, in this case at least, uh, we have a 37-year-old man with keratoconus who in 1985 uh, had received PKP, but then received LASIK over that PKP for anisometropia. Um, there was difficulty with suction during the case, and a free flap was created with a microkeratome. And he subsequently developed epithelial ingrowth in that LASIK flap, and then received a repeat PKP. So here you see on the pathology slides, sheets of cystic epithelial cells that actually connect with the flap edge. And the authors um, proposed that, were two, that there were two main theories of epithelial ingrowth. The first, which was much less common, much less aggressive, is epithelial cells, which kind of um, originate from epithelial cells that are dragged underneath the flap during the LASIK flap creation or maybe not irrigated out uh, well enough, but they're isolated cells that resolve with time and are typically not aggressive. But the more concerning type was epithelial ingrowth that connects to the flap edge close to stem cells and continues to proliferate and is much more aggressive, as in our patient's case. So how common is epithelial ingrowth and what are the risk factors for its development? So the first large manuscript that I found detailing the rates of epithelial ingrowth was actually published in 2000. Um, and this uh, was a retrospective case you know, large case series of um, over 3,000 patients who received LASIK, 480 of them who received retreatment uh, between 1996 to 1998 in one center. These patients were treated for myopic LASIK only and uh, received microkeratome LASIK. And there were 43 eyes total out of this number that had epithelial ingrowth. And this paper identified several risk factors, including having an epithelial defect at the time of flap creation or EBMD. Now, the authors in this paper argue that not all epithelial ingrowth needs to be treated. It's very peripheral, not bothering the patient, um, not progressive, but that there are certain characteristics that make it more necessary to treat epithelial ingrowth. 
For example, if it encroaches upon the pupil center causing glare and other visual disturbances, if it actually lifts up the flap edge causing fluorescing pooling and a constant foreign body sensation, if it raises up the flap enough to cause a regular astigmatism, or in the worst case, if it actually causes flap melting or keratolysis. Now this was actually a recent review published in 2018 that reviewed um, all the literature thus far detailing risk factors for um, epithelial ingrowth following LASIK. And the authors uh, found in the literature many risk factors described, including, for example, a microkeratome LASIK flap over a femtosecond LASIK flap because of the uh, way that the flap is created, or, for example, the LASIK flap dislocating. Um, I found interesting hyperopic LASIK over myopic LASIK. Um, or having uh, needing a flap lift for retreatment. And in terms of our patient recall, she had a microkeratome LASIK, so she definitely has one of these risk factors, and she also uh, had had actually multiple flap lifts uh, during her um, treatment course. So now, what are treatment options? So that same manuscript actually uh, described a bunch of different treatment options that are in the literature, all are kind of retrospective case series. Um, MD stands for mechanical debridement. So you have mechanical debridement only, mechanical debridement plus uh, some type of alcohol solution, mechanical debridement plus glue, or maybe plus mitomycin C or plus fibrin sealant or some type of other glue, even um, amniotic membrane grafts or uh, PTK, or actually YAG laser. And what I found most interesting about this is that no matter what the method, there is still actually a not insignificant rate of recurrence for many of these patients, even after their primary treatment for their epithelial ingrowth. So it's definitely something very difficult to treat. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about the YAG approach, because as you'll see, we tried that for our patient, um, as I'll describe. So this is a case report. Um, Panels A and B superior are before, and panels A, B, and C inferior are after. And you can see that after the authors used YAG laser on that LASIK flap interface at the area of epithelial cells, there actually was pretty good regression, which was very interesting. So back to our patient. So recall, she had LASIK in both eyes in 1999 with retreatment in 2011 and had epithelial ingrowth in both eyes after that retreatment. She had already had um, a few flap relifts combined with retreatment and some question of glue. Her left eye was not bothering her, and this was her right eye, only corrects to 2040, with these nests of epithelial cells, and her vision is very distorted. So we actually first did try YAG laser for her, and unfortunately, it didn't seem to really work in this case. You have before on the left and then one month later on the right, and you can see that that area of epithelial and growth doesn't seem like it's regressing. So after that was tried, she actually underwent flap uh, lift with suturing as she hadn't had that before and glue and a bandaged contact lens. So here's a video. So this is lifting the flap. Sped up five times, uh -huh. FYI. <laughs> uh -huh. and then debriding off those epithelial cells, first with a wax cell, then with a grease halber. Continuing to debride, also debriding off the back side of the flap. And this was actually done in the OR2 in a more controlled environment, not in the LASIK suite. Irrigating profusely, flipping that flap back over, patting it down with a wax cell, putting sutures in place to make sure the flap stays tucked down. Rotating the sutures and then actually putting a wrist sure. And then a contact lens. 
So this is the patient at post-op week one. Um, you can see the sutures in place buried. And um, the edges of the flap were actually not healing uh, very well. So actually at post-op week two, she had some of that epithelium taken off and um, the sutures removed. And here she is at post-op month two. So her vision definitely corrects um, better. It corrects to 2020. Without corrections, 2040. And you see that many of the epithelial and growth areas are, at least at this point, not present. But that um, uh, one portion in one quadrant here in the left bottom corner, she does have recurrence of epithelial and growth, although it's not connected to the flap edge. So the question is what to do for in the future. I think at this point, we are going to observe her, but there, as you can see, there are a lot of different options, none of which is really necessarily the right answer. So curious to hear what your thoughts are. Thank you. Uh -huh.